March 18, 2019, we're being audio and video recorded. Would you please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first order of business is an executive session. I'm going to call for a motion to go into executive session for the following purpose, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFSCME, Local 2905, Massachusetts Coalition of Police, Local 360, and Teamsters Local 170, pursuant to the state open meeting law, because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town, and we will return to open session. I'll second. Good evening. Motion to go into executive session has been made and seconded. Roll call vote. I Robert Snow. I Cliff Pierce. I Joe Perry. I Dave Peterson. Okay, we're in executive session. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, we're back in open session. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, we have an appointment uh, with uh, Police Chief Scott Dumas to present Gavin Forney as a new full-time police officer. Chief? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, as you all know, on um, March 14th, Officer Scott Hurdle, after 23 years, retired from the police department. Scott's going to be um, greatly missed, but with, uh, with retirement comes opportunity. Um, we have a great... Um, we had five candidates that applied for the open position, all, all reserve officers for us at the, uh, at the Raleigh Police Department. And uh, I tell you, it was, um, it was a very, very tough selection process. Uh, Eric Forney, I mean, uh, Eric Giordano uh, was also part of the process and did a great job representing himself well. Um, but in the end, um, you know, uh, Officer Gavin Forney uh, was the person that uh, was able to make the selection in the process. Um, a lot of what pushed Gavin over the top was uh, since, he, since he was hired, Back in April 2017, uh, Gavin's done everything that's asked from him. He's, 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 he's worked midnight shifts, he's worked holidays, he's worked, uh, you know, uh, any shift that was asked. He'd come in at uh, midnight, he'd go home, he'd come back at 3 if, if there was an open shift available. And not only when he was working, he was out there, he's making stops, uh, he's making connections with the community. Um, and, you know, during the testing process, uh, at, you know, Gavin did not see any outstanding job. All three all three finalists did an outstanding job, Eric being one of them, as well as Tara Bernard. I wish we had three uh, full time positions but but, but we don't. Um, so but it uh, I'm very pleased and, and, and proud to uh, offer up Gavin Forney as the uh, as a as recommendation for the next full time patrol officer for the town of Raleigh. Great. Anything you'd like to say, Gavin? Just want to say I'm very thankful for the opportunity and I'd be proud to serve the town of Raleigh. Okay. Yeah, make a motion. Motion make to uh, appoint Gavin Forney as a full-time police officer has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So as uh, as has been tradition, that um, Mrs. Hazen is offered to uh, just now when I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, Graciously to volunteered yeah, to swear to swear Gavin in. Uh, his girlfriend Quinn is going to remove the badge, and his, his father Eric Forney, who's a full-time police officer in the town of Raleigh, will will pin him with his new badge. So, Quinn. Excuse me. Your chance to stick them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Stand to the side. Forge to the front. I, Gavin Forney, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States 
the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of office of full-time patrolman during the term for which I have been appointed. So help me God. I, Gavin Forney, hereby accept the position of full-time patrolman in the Police Department of the Town of Raleigh, Massachusetts. Very good. I'd like to have your signature on the bottom there. Then if I could ask you to stop at my desk, my office, on your way out, there's more signing to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Of the board today. Sure. And we'll get yeah, a picture of the board. Yeah, the chief wants to come up. Space is tight, but. Uh, let me grab it. Put back. Put back. Put back. Wouldn't be good for him, would I? Stepped on him. You got me. Thank you. How are you doing, Sherry? Good. I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Not great. Still here. Yes. Open. Oh, I'll bet it just stuck. A little bit. Then. Thank you. So, Chief, do you need a vote on a waiver for Mr. Forney? Yeah. you have that in your packet, do you need a vote on it? Yeah. Okay, so it's a vote to for a temporary waiver. Uh, for Gavin from the basic police recruit training because there are not currently any academy scheduled, right? Correct. Yes, sir. I'll give it a motion. Second. Motion. Will the waivers have been made and seconded? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, now we're going to talk about the police department budget. Right? <coughs> yes, sir. Yep. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Um, so I, I, uh, I'm, I'm basically just going to go over the summary memo of the of the of the PD budget that uh, I've attached with your packet. Um, our overall budget is going to be de decreased by forty thousand four hundred three dollars. Uh, the majority of that uh, decrease is due to an over budgeting last year. Um, last year, when we only funded the detective for halfway through the year, um, that was the decision. But I mistakenly put the full time. The detective and the, and the patrol officer uh, fully funded in there, so it was only supposed to be partially funded with the decrease, and it was it was missed. It wasn't discovered until I started building the budget this year uh, of the oversight. So uh, we'll be money back. There'll be money left in the budget uh, this year for that. But that's that's the majority of the of the decrease in, in the salaries. Um, the chief salary. As far as on page two, uh, as far as on the spreadsheet, the chief salary was adjusted uh, along with all the non-union personnel in line with the uh, non-union compensation schedule. Um, our overall wages and benefits are actually down 58,692. Again, due in large part to the previous mentioned overfund, um, but also, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, have listened to this. The uh, calculations. We did put uh, increases in there for the non-union personnel as far as uh, with the uh, in the adjustment with the um, compensation schedule. Also, the uh, the union uh, both asked me in the mass cops are currently in negotiations, but included in these calculations is also the step increases on the FY19 schedule. Uh, but they they continue to be in negotiations. Also, in the, pay, in, the, in the wage action line, there is one ad in there that I'd like you to consider, and I did put it in, in on the, it's an issue and option. And that represents a, um, a five-hour increase into our custodial work with the new police department there. There's, there's going to be more time and, and more things that need to be cleaned. I, I, I spoke with our current um, custodian to see if he's even willing to increase his hours by five hours if, if the board of selectmen appropriate it. He says five hours would, would work, but anything more than that would probably be too much for him. Um, 
And that is not calculated into the budget presentation right now. That's under issue issue and option one. And if, if that was calculated, um, if it was to be an added, take an affirmative action by the board to, to put it in, in here, and that would be an additional cost of $2,233. Um, next, uh, next page, page five, talks about the, uh, the increases and decreases um, within, within the police department. Again, the, uh, the increases are due to the step increases uh, of the FY19 of those that were due uh, in that, and the decrease in the police wages for the over-budgeted over over position. The holiday buyout, which we instituted last year, was one less uh, participant, so that's a, a decrease in the, in the funding for that. And the OIC pay, as I mentioned last year when we built the budget, if the, if the, if the sergeant, the third full-time sergeant was implemented, that would, that would decrease the need for the OIC page, and that is, <laughs> and that is um, stipulated within the summary. As far as the expenses, um, most of the expense increases have been outlined through the issues and options uh, portion. Um, they, uh, those issues and options, which is include Issue and option number two. This is one. This is kind of a um, a guess on on this one. It's a, it's a best guess uh, based upon the limited information we had, and that has to do with, with the utilities, you know, for the new <coughs> police department. If I, and and uh, I'm sure Chief Rogers going to go through the same issue. Our best guesstimate is based upon only the. Um, the two bills that we have since we've been on, since the building has been self-contained for the most part, and the utility bills that we have. We've been splitting those bills with Castagna Construction as far as, you know, trying to um, partial, partial pay, what, what, what they've been utilizing while still doing the renovations in the old, B, in the old PD, and what, would, what we're utilizing in the, um, in the new PD. We'll meet someplace in the middle, and that's about $2,400 a month which adds about $6,800 to my utility bill. I looked at our utility bills as, as they were uh, last year. Um, they were funded at about $22,000, and we are about 60% through the year when I, when I looked at built this, and we're about 60% spent. So it's definitely going to be an ad, and that's my best guesstimate as far as what that ad will be. Uh, we are having issues as far as getting that heating and cooling issue, you know, settled, and we're still working with the with the manufacturers and the engineers to, you know, to try to stabilize that, but it's, it's, uh, it's my best guess based upon that. So that's issue and option number two, um, which I have calculated into, into here, you know, but it can, again, the, the next three issues and options I'll talk about uh, have been calculated in here, uh, but easily, they can easily be removed if, if need be. The second issue and option has to do with that, uh, as far as, Still talking about expenses. This is the contractual expenses that go up every year. IMC, our records management system, these are uh, uh, percentages that, that go up. Uh, and that was $685. You know, for, and I, again, this is, this is a line, this is a, this is a cost based upon contracts that we have that is going to go up every year incrementally, and that's about what it went up last year. Issue and option number four. Again, this has been added in there, but can be taken out. When, when uh, we talked about last year during the budget building process, um, there's also bringing our MDTs up for um, to get an MDT, mobile data terminal computer, in each of the frontline cruisers that are being utilized to include a supervisor's cruiser. We bought one through capital last year, and we bought one through a grant this year. They take a data card. You know, in order to get that data download, so we can, so they can be utilized, you know, through the internet, and make sure that the, the records management system can go back and forth between the cruiser and, and, and the terminal. And that's forty dollars a month for a total of uh, times two, nine hundred sixty dollars uh, annually. You know, for the MBTs. This has been. The, I don't think I don't anticipate this cost going up per annum. Um, next year because they've been pretty stable as far as what they cost for, for a data plan for the mobile data terminals and if it if it does it'll be it'll be incremental. Is that built into your expense budget now or is it it is, it is it is built into the one presented but it's not the additional two are not built in. So you need the additional money yeah. the additional two. Yes sir. But we're built in for three we have two additions. <coughs> And 
I, um, and the rest is just uh, explanation of benefits for the offices, page seven and eight. Those did not go up. Uh, they went up based upon the step increases for the uh, differential uh, for the offices on the ship. And as far as the holiday buyout, um, they went up. Actually, it came down a little bit, but incrementally because of the step increases with the higher wages, it was an increase slightly, slightly with that. So again, overall on the budget, um, we're showing a $40,403 deduction from last year. So with all the increases that we had, we're still showing that. Well, Chief, on those MDT terminals you're talking about, if we, if we don't purchase that, those two are not going to be working, is that what I gather? Well, or not. I'm going to have Rob Peter to pay Paul. I'm going to try to find it someplace, you know, in, in my budget if it's if it's not in there. Uh, okay. Because I really, it really does me no good to a button to no, purchase a computer without the functionality of the computer. That was how much? Nine hundred sixty dollars. Oh, my, my other question is: here, with the new officer, are you able to cover the? Cost when he's at the when he will be going to the academy is that included in here? It's not included in here because I still have three thousand dollars in capital from uh, another officer that was so it's already budgeted for. So you're all set on budget for that? Yes, sir. Good. Okay. And hopefully, you know, the state at some point because they're talking about maybe picking up that cost, but they haven't done it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Good yeah. luck on that one. <laughs> That's, that's no. Anyone else? I don't. No, I think uh, you know, I think we should include the nine hundred dollars for the. Yeah. It's foolish to have the MDTs without yeah right. without the ability to uh, operate them efficiently anyway. So. So, yep. so like I said, the only that's already in there in the presentation, right. uh, <coughs> so it doesn't require anything because it, 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 the only thing that would require something is if you decide to agree to the um, the additional five hours for the for the uh, custodial. Uh, for the for the police department, that would take an affirmative move on your okay. budget. That is not in my budget. So we'll put that off to the side. Yeah, I think we. In other words, what we've been different departments been coming in, agencies within the town have been coming in looking for additional hours, mm -hmm. which we're really tight on the budget. So what we're looking at is holding off on these until the end to see what money we might have available because of the amount of money we're giving to the schools and. We're doing some, some raises, they're bargaining, some employees are bargaining, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we just, <laughs> we can't give out what we don't have. So if uh, you can give that to us in a separate proposal, uh, it will be included when we when we get to the end, assuming we have enough money to increase, because the library's looking for increased hours, the assessor's office is looking, and we've decided that we've got to backtrack a little bit and be a little tighter on this because uh, we're giving up money like water at the... <laughs> No, I understand. <laughs> not quite like that, but it's just a matter of the, there's only so much money available, and we just want to make sure that we're not over budgeting and coming into a problem and trying to balance the budget at the end. So, sure. That is a, that's an issue that's already been right. submitted as an issue and option. I mean, I think with, with both the police and fire stations, we're looking obviously at increased custodial hours as a brand, brand new buildings, and we certainly don't want them uh, being neglected or, or having issues with maintenance and so on and so forth. So. I think that'll be a top priority. But at this, at this point, I think we we uh, hold off on it. And yes, we'll see at the end. If if not, it might be a situation where halfway through the year, it's like almost like we did last year, we ran into a problem at the end of the year. We didn't hire the two firemen until and, you know three quarters of the way through when the sergeant was promoted uh, or halfway through. So it might be something like that if we if we get down to that point. At this point, we just don't know. Sure. I'm trying to put these things together. So. Great. Okay. I'll, no. give you, I'll give you a motion okay. to approve the budget with the increase of 900 and, what was that, Chief, 900 and? 960, but again, that's already, that's already in there. Oh, that's already in there. Right. Okay, so I'll to, just approve the, second. approve the budget. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the budget as presented has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, just one quick question on the station. Is the old station still I wasn't at the meeting last week. Um, our plan is to cut dispatch over there. Um, so hopefully, 
they're having issues with the phones right now as far as how and again I'll, I'll uh, as I'll explain to Bernie out in the hall I'll I'll, I'll tell you what I know and then <laughs> basically I'm going to parrot back what was told to me uh, they're having trouble porting the numbers because of the voice over IP um, system um, that's not going to affect me so much as, as far as my move because I can plug in our own our old phones but it will affect the fire department's ability to move over because that same phone system is going over there you know so uh, as far as the PD hopefully we should be okay, they, they should over. be all right because I don't think they're going to move until after the first of April because or after the first of May probably because of the they're not going to pave up there until sometime in April right the fire department doesn't want to move in until it's yeah, paid, the truck. It's right Right. right. So, but uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank, you. You. thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Chief. Okay. I'll open the public comment period now. Anyone has a public comment between now and the next five minutes? Please make it. Um, next on our agenda. Yes. I have one. Okay. Sorry, David Westfield Street. Given that we don't know what it's going to cost to operate the new fire station, um, I believe there's an upcoming discussion or something with the fire association to keep the other station open as well right that's uh, not on our agenda we later on be advised of what it's going to cost to run two stations those of us that voted for the new one I didn't realize we've been at now like two right we don't know what's going to cost to uh, operate the new one I have no idea what it costs to re operate the old one either okay so well maybe I, some I think we'll before those we'll be discussing that later on tonight yeah okay. hopefully Thank you. <clears throat> okay we have a uh, we're, now is a pu I need a public hearing on uh, a location of a new pole at 9S Patmos Road. We've received a petition from the Rowley Municipal Lighting Plant for this new pole. I'll first read the notice of public hearing. Uh, notice is hereby given that the Rowley Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on an application by the Rowley Municipal Lighting Plant and Verizon to locate, locate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures including necessary anchors, guys, and other such sustaining and protecting fixtures to be owned and used in common by the petitioners along and across the following public way or ways. Patmos Road, New Pole Number 9-S. Also for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, <coughs> cables, and wires in the above or intersection public ways for the purpose of making connection with such poles and buildings as each of said petitioners may desire for distributing purposes. Plans mark Rowley Municipal Lighting Plant and Verizon number 2019-1 dated January 23, 2019 are on file in the office of the Board of Selectmen. The hearing will be held on Monday, March 18, 2019 at 7.15 p.m. in the Town Hall, Main Street, Rowley, Mass. So I'll now ask for a motion to open the public hearing. Motion. Second. Motion to open the public hearing has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Um, anyone uh, speaking during the hearing will please uh, identify himself and uh, state his or her address for the record. No. Abstain. Recuse. I recuse myself. Okay. I'll call on the Light Department representative to speak on the application. Um, yep, yeah, like Mark Anderson. Um, so we have a pole that a guide wire that holds a pole up that's into a tree that's dead on Patmos Road, and we need to put a pole so we can get rid of that dead tree before the pole falls over, basically. And um, contacted all the abutters uh, by certified mail, and um, they reached out and both said they didn't care. And, about it. I have a picture of the location if you guys need to see it. Sure. Yeah, I think we, do. Do we have one here? <coughs> we got one in the back. Oh, you got one. That's it? Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them around there. Okay, thanks. All right, did anyone in the audience uh, like to ask a question or make a comment about this particular matter? Uh, okay, we now need to uh, discuss the petition. Uh, is, are the board members satisfied with the information they've received or yep. have any further questions? No. 
Okay, I'll call for a motion to close the hearing. Motion. Second. Um, most, okay, the motion is to close the hearing is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, Aye. the ayes have it. So now we need a discussion on the motion to approve or dis disapprove. It looks pretty open and shut to me, unless someone. I'll make a motion to approve. A, okay. I'll second. Uh, motion to approve has been made and seconded. All those in favor, aye. Aye. All those opposed, aye. Have, aye have it. So I will sign the order for poll locations document. Is that, Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, we have a 7.30 appointment with Library Director Pam Jacobson to present the FY20 library budget. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. So, we had a chance to review the packet from the library. Um, on the wages side, we have used the new compensation plan to calculate the wages required for the library staff. And in addition to that, we have recommended that our two department heads, our adult services and youth services <coughs> associates, uh, be made full-time, 35 hours a week. So that shows the increases in that line. And then there are two kind of standard increases that come with the library budget. On the expenses side, the first is our network assessment, which is just a figure that's given to us based on a formula of our usage of consortium resources for the past year. And finally, the library has a materials expenditure requirement, so any increase in the library overall budget necessitates an increase in the materials expenditure budget to keep us at that 16% requirement. So uh, are you seeking uh, approval for an increase in hours? Yes. Okay, could you address A total of seven hours. Currently our children's librarian is 28 hours a week and our adult services librarian is 30 hours a week. So we'd like to increase them both to 35. As a bonus, in order to do that, the library will open half a day on Fridays, which we have not been able to do in the past. So the patrons will benefit from that as well. We'll have more time to get things done. We'll have a better chance of keeping our valued employees. We've had several sort of jump ship to full-time jobs at our neighboring libraries. Um, so what would the, be the total dollar amount associated with that seven hour increase? Okay, in the, uh, in the issues and options portion, um, The total increase, which reflects the extra hours and the new compensation plan, is $25,602. And the portion of that that is the extra 12 staff hours is $15,198. It's about 15% on that line. 19%, excuse me. Okay, so you, I think you heard our previous discussion with, with Chief Dumas about the uh, custodial increase that he not. oh you didn't okay well we're at the point where we have to make some uh, tentative decisions and put put other things off until we're sure that uh, we have the money to pay for them so um, I think this increase in hours is gonna gonna be ha have to be one of those where we, we don't approve that tonight uh, but rather we put it off and see what develops in terms of how much money is available yeah, basically we're running no problem of uh, we okayed the <coughs> management non-union <coughs> salary increases. And we had money, we have money set aside for that. Due to other increases in the budget, we're getting very concerned. The school budget was up quite substantially. 
uh, insurance, uh, retirements, and assessments for various assessments that we have to fund as well as like the ones you have. It indicate we're running a little bit concerned about having money to be able to increase hours. So we already told the police chief to give us a separate. He want he needs with a new building to increase by five hours of custodians. So we're putting that on hold. We're asking you to put on hold the extra hours for the librarians and the openings. At, when we get to the end of the budget process, we'll see what we have available for funds. And, and that would be before town meeting or after yes, town, be meeting? Before before town meeting? Before town meeting. Uh, and we'll know one way. We don't have the money. We, well, you're not gonna, we're not going to be able to fund it. If we have some money, we'll be able to fund some things and not others, so we'll have to make a decision at that time. And yeah, we're doing that across the board in all departments. Yeah, we're going to ask the same thing of the other other. Anybody who's looking in, for additional uh, we'll go back and a couple of you approved last week, we might go back and ask them to reassess so that trying to treat everybody equally and the important thing we want to do this year was increase the management, non union management salaries because we're so far behind on those that uh, you know, it's with losing people we're not gonna be able to replace them as you yourself, you, you know you know from, from your situation. And I so. think not being able to offer a true full time position right really hurts us in that process no I'm sure it does yeah. it just that you know it's uh, it's it's a matter of what we can afford and what we can't and we're, we're making a big jump this year with the by re increasing management salaries in addition we we're bagging with all three unions which we don't know what those raises are going to be but those are coming down the pike so we're, uh, there's going to be a substantial increase in the amount of money that's going to be going to be spent on on these kinds of things so we're just trying to increase only the, the absolute essentials in the other parts of the budget, so it's, it's, that's where it stands. We apologize for having to do that, but that's, if we don't have the money, we, we don't have the money, so we're, we're looking to uh, just tighten our belts a little bit, and then if, in fact, we do have the money at the end when everything, everything flushes out, and we'll see if we can go back and add to the various budgets at least something. Anyway, it may not be the whole thing. But. So Debbie, I think we were, we wanted to see uh, budgets A and B to to show for each yes, alternative. And then um, you know, as things evolve, I can get together with Pam and look at different scenarios as we you know, wrap up the budget process. But uh, right now, the budget does include, as I understand, issues and options. <coughs> that. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that you know anything um, other things that are in the budget, though, if the board has an opinion on. Um, any of the other items that she has or wants. Well, I think everything else is pretty essential. I mean, it's not, you're certainly not being absorbed it. The only thing, yeah. other thing would be the increase in the mandated amount would change yeah. depending on how many hours. The municipal appropriation. Yeah. Maybe you're um, right. But this is, it gets a little complicated. It might make it best off if we, if she gives us an A and B budget. Sure. And then next week, you don't have to have to be here, but we'll the budget without the extra hours. And then we'll get together, like, like Debbie said, later on, and we see what if we can afford to put the extra, extra opening hours and extra time for the two employees. Does that sound all right? That's perfectly reasonable. So we won't okay it tonight. We'll put it off, and then next week we'll just perfunctory vote, vote on it just to uh, yeah. to get a starting number in there and maybe add later. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's yeah. what that's what we'll do. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing is, we've been talking. I know you sent out Joe's our representative to. Be a long range, uh, not the right term. Strategic planning, uh, strategic strategic planning and, I, and I think that's design something that design. you know you deal with in there also. So we'll see how that goes. If in fact we can fund it, I'm sure that'll be part of the, or if we are partially funded, it'll be part of your strategic strategic plan. So we've been gradually growing these positions. It started yeah. at 16, and then went to 19, and then 20, yeah, I know, 28. No, <laughs> I mean, the problem with the whole town is, and we see it with the police and fire, is, is, is it, the town is growing, and growing pains are difficult to deal with, and uh, services have to be increased. Every, uh, almost every department is looking for some kind of an increase in service hours and, and, and employees to handle the needs. It's the volume. Just, it's, yeah. yep. And, I, you know, I don't want to blame the schools, but every year the schools take a huge percentage of our money and, uh, you know, they, they take it right off the top and then we have to deal with what's left. So that's where we sit right now as far as what, what kind of money we're going to have available. So hopefully we'll be able to fund at least some of these things, if not all of them. But we're not going to go out to live now and guarantee it and then and come back at the last minute and say, wait a minute, cut your budget. So. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pam.
Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we next have a uh, 740 appointment with Board of Assessors Chairwoman Diane D'Angeli to present the FY20 Assessor's Budget. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Now, you've heard the discussion yes, we just had. Yes, so my right. discussion has the same exact scenario in it. So right. I'm just going to go through, but I have the answer. But I, on the budget that Sean had put together to present to the selectmen was on our wage and salaries was an increase in Sean, the principal <coughs> assessor's salary, um, which would expand the hours to right. match the treasurer's, as you we were aware. And then along with that, we were requesting to have Rosemary, the administrative assistance hours increased from 24 to 30 hours a week, which that's <coughs> where the increase of the salary lines would come from at the 17,000. The administrative assistance position isn't right. an increase due to contracts or anything. It would just be a season of increased hours. Right. So do, you, so do you have a number for the the number the increased wages due to the increased hours? <coughs> well, that's these are the ones that are submitted on the budget. What the FY twenty request is mm -hmm. reflecting the increase in hours. Right. So Sean would be going from thirty five hours a week to yeah. thirty seven okay. and a half. In Rosemary would go from twenty four to thirty. Right. On it, I don't have any numbers in front of me. If okay. we don't submit those, if I reduce it by those two and a half hours in Rosemary's, would be just the same as last year. Oh, okay. Because there's no increase because they're in negotiations. The union she's in, right. so hers is level. Oh, five. for her, right? We keep it at 24 hours. Right. Which that's what I'm going to be. I need the assumption right now after listening. Yes, to the right. So, so Sean's. If you'd like, I can calculate that and get it back to you for tomorrow night his what his cost would be without those two and a half hours mm -hmm. if that's what you'd like yeah why don't you do, if you could do sean's reduced by two and a half hours and the administrative assistance by the six hours the six hours just work it out uh, have the she can probably do it the administrative assistant yeah i'll talk to her in the work morning. with debbie and come give, us, give us an option morning yeah that way, they are, what it would look like without the increase keeping the yeah, hours right. Of, right. of operation the same. Yeah, so if you can give us that budget, we'll pay it to be, and then next week we'll we'll vote. Right. To, you don't know, you don't have to be here. We'll just, uh, I don't think anybody, unless somebody's got a problem with the other parts of the budget, it'll be fine. So you, don't, you won't have to be here next week. Okay. Just, uh, we'll vote on it, just as long as we get the two budgets, we'll vote on the one with the reduced hours. Mm -hmm. and at some point before the let everybody know if we have sufficient funds to increase the hours or, if, or maybe some of the hours or all it depends on how it all right okay all that yeah or uh, maybe part of the hours for the administration yeah really it depends depending on, on what finances so you'll be in the pool with all the the everybody else that's going to be for me the and then maybe chief after me yeah police chief's looking for custodial help uh, no i understand so library, i'll work on that and i'll okay. be in touch with debbie tomorrow i'll sure. call you in the morning okay on that on the expense side of the board of assessors budget there is a slight increase. Um, what we were doing is taking the, f we tried to level fund it, and we took the 500 out of consultants and added into our professional services. And then there's a slight increase of $948, which is due to the increase for the software license and web hosting that we need. Right. Um, some of the increase, the light department splits with the Board of Assessors. And they're taking on some red, so I uh, would only for the assessors would only be the nine hundred forty-eight dollars on that. That slight increase. Other than that, there will be no additional good. cost or anything. I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. Any questions? No, 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 no. Good. I'm good. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right. So we won't vote on this tonight. Right. Okay. And I'll work on the other one. Have it ready tomorrow okay. night, and I'll. Well, I'll just work for Debbie well, before Debbie next tomorrow. week. We'll vote on. We'll, we'll vote, vote on next, next Monday. Monday. Okay. Perfect. Um, no, but she's. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, working out with Debbie. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Okay, our next uh, appointment is at eight.
8 p.m. with Attorney Matt Caffrey. No, it's yeah. Susan. Uh, we have a 7.50, but... I the stand corrected. It's 7.50 with, yep. with uh, Town Clerk Susan Hazen. Okay, so we got a few minutes before that. I'll go to uh, general business. Number one, which is a letter from the Troop 15 Boy Scouts announcing that Matthew W. Miller has achieved the rank of Eagle Scouts. We have a letter from George Pasenka, Scoutmaster, uh, saying, Dear friend in scouting, Boy Scout, Boy Scout Troop number 15 of Raleigh, Massachusetts, is proud to announce that Matthew W. Miller has achieved the rank of Eagle Scout as of 28 February 2019. I understand that you have responded in the past to such achievements with some form of recognition. Any commu communication from you would be presented at his Eagle Award ceremony. I would appreciate any action on your part in showing s support for this young man. So, what if we, uh, what do we say? Usually do a commendation. No? Who's your citation? Citation. You usually bring them in and, yeah. you know, read the citation. Right, yeah. Present it to me. Okay. So, <coughs> I'll make that motion. Citation. Yeah, for each, for each one. For each one. Right? For each. Yeah. Okay. Uh, motions made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed. You guys have it. And for the record, the second uh, young man to make uh, Eagle Scout is I'm looking for the name. Luke Luke Daniel Medivier has achieved the rank of Eagle Scout. So congratulations to both of them. How many Eagle Scouts does this make in Georgia? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It's well up into the 70s. Oh. Yes. General business number three is a request from Jane White to hold the Rowley Girl Scouts bridging and awards ceremony on Friday, June 14, 2019 from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's an annual request. The fire chief, police chief, and health services coordinator and highway surveyor have reviewed this request and have no comments or concerns. Motion to approve? Give that motion. Motion. A second. Motions been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have. Take up new business number one a letter from the Department of Agricultural Division of Animal Health uh, seeking the nomination of an animal inspector. We've received the annual nomination form from the State Agricultural Division of Animal Health for the town's animal inspector. The board needs to vote to nominate Reed Wilson as the town's animal inspector. Once he has been nominated, he will sign the attached form in the witness of a notary, and we, we will mail the form to the Department of Agricultural Resources. Motion to nominate Reed Wilson. It's been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, you guys have it. Uh, new business number two is, uh, is to vote and sign <coughs> the contract with town administrator Deborah Egan, which we have already approved. I'll make that motion. Right. All second. Motions been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, new business number three to vote and sign the contract with Fire Chief James Broderick, which we've already previously discussed. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Motion to approve James Broderick's contracts has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. And new business number four is to vote and sign the contract with Principal Assessor Sean McFadden, which we have previously discussed. Is this... Motion to approve? I'll make that motion. Second. I'll recuse myself. Uh, I'll second. Motion, uh, the motion's been made and seconded. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll recuse myself, sorry. 
You guys have it. Squeeze in old business number one, which is a Pine Grove school project update. Well, anything care to say? I don't have a no, uh, much news. Uh, the uh, everything is on target. Uh, we're meeting our target dates uh, for completion. We're over 60 percent complete for the uh, construction, and the uh, everything is going along well. They are going to have. Uh, Along with the book fair, they are going to have uh, limited uh, uh, tours of the building tomorrow, starting at 10 a.m. Okay, thank you. Old business number two is the fire station and police station update. Yeah, the, police, the police chief gave us a quick update on the, on the police station that you've been moving in the next week or two to the move should be complete. Fire station will be done pretty much. We're waiting for the pavement to be put in before they move in so that the weight of the engine doesn't uh, run into the fresh hot top. And obviously we need to do the uh, landscaping once the weather improves well enough. And there's a lot of new things going on, but basically it's all moving, moving along and quiet. Okay, thank you. All right, so it's close enough to 750, is Sue, but Sue's not here. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yes, she is. Be clear. Sue. Come on in. Save your seat, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. How okay. are you? Okay. <laughs> I hope I wasn't holding you up. No. So, uh, do you want to explain your budget, or do you want to explain it? I can, <laughs> I can explain it. Um, do you Do you all have the same paper that I have? Yes. Y'all yep. looking at the same thing. Um, and so the the guidelines we got was level funded. The fence lines are essentially level funded, with the exception of like the price of stamps went up. So I ordered the same amount of stamps, but the price of stamps went up. I can't can't do anything about that. Um, I didn't, you know, ask for anything do an extra um, the salaries uh, we got no guidelines as to elected official salaries <laughs> so I went with what we've used the last few years which is 2.25 uh, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my <coughs> salary I don't have huge issues with my salary that's just kind of a cost of living sure. adjustment um, so that's the only adjustment I made to that office wages Sounds went up good. exactly you know what the paperwork told us to do. The only one that was a little different was election wages. That's <laughs> so I can explain that. Again, it's a small budget. It's $3,500. But if you look at the elections, it's based on how many elections I have during the year. So some years there's three or four elections, other years there's one. So, you know, it goes up and down. It doesn't increase that they don't ask for more bells and whistles or, <laughs> but if there's more, it's going to cost more. The election wages, how do we explain it? The minimum wage went up January 1st from $11 to $12. So I looked it up in 2018, the minimum was 11. I had some election workers that were making $11.66. Therefore, I had to make an adjustment just to pay them for the May election. So it's an adjustment within this year. So since they weren't making minimum wage, in 2018, at 1166, I just went up a dollar to 1266. They're still 66 cents over the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And then for the 2020 budget, I gave them 2.25 percent, which is again what we've done several years. And I gave, I did that dollar adjustment to all the categories, or else they're all going to just meet the middle. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it doesn't really follow the step and grade pattern because it started with what they had and I adjusted it because it made sense to me and it doesn't seem ab absorbent and election workers are important um, not only uh, just not only just getting them but they're uh, underappreciated maybe I want to say and that uh, you know democracy depends on them doing it right so Debbie you have a 
Good, sir. Chairman, if you can get some clarification, because the FY20 compensation schedule it accounts for the minimum wage in those election workers and non-union employees that are already in pay grades. But I just wasn't sure. Um, and I don't, I don't see the calculation, but I, I can go over that later with the town clerk. Okay, the calculation is just what I said it was. They, they're in the, they're already, they, they have a, they're assigned a pay grade under the personnel system. Mm -hmm. so I, I just didn't know um, what the calculation was because they, they're already plotted on the system. And I d went into business for myself. <laughs> I don't know how else to say that. Because I thought it was important that they kept where they were. I mean, they mu they were on the system last year, that step and grade thing, but it was when we had the the adjustment. Um, where I went up to 1472, the um, step and grade would go up to 1422, 50 cents. Well, they were included in the new personnel. They, well, they've always been non-union employees under the, the personnel. So we gave them a, an FY twenty, whatever those budgeting, whatever the budget number was for FY twenty, should be what they got. Yeah, because the municipalities um, don't have to pay the minimum wage. That's why they pay the, word, the, the compensation schedule. The town's exempt on the minimum wage. Brought up per se. We're trying to account for it. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> so yeah, that's no, a plowing. Is what I want to say. <laughs> we accounted for it in the new in the new uh, pay. Plan. That's why we, we obviously don't want to. The live library was especially hit with it uh, on, in terms of the pages not being paid. Uh, it was making more money working at McDonald's than the the library. Um, so it's only 10 cents different with the tellers in the 19 adjustment. The adjustment that I made, that the arbitrary dollar adjustment I made. You, you want to go over that with her tomorrow? 50 Debbie, cents. Make sure, just make sure we're running that. We need to make sure that. I know it's not a big dollar amount. We just want to make sure that everybody's being treated the same. Yeah, I And then we can just okay the budget. We'll just uh, if the figures change, we'll just you don't have to be here next week. We'll just we'll just we'll go to the next week tomorrow night. Tomorrow we'll just do it tomorrow. You're gonna okay that, and then we'll okay it next week. But we just want to make sure that because we implemented that new schedule, and, uh, we want to maintain everyone within that schedule. So. Okay. Sometimes I keep my mouth shut. No, <laughs> no. It's just one of those things that it's like. I'll make a motion to approve the. Well, we're, we're not approving it. No. We'll no. wait till next week. We'll and wait till next week. Okay. You can work with Debbie tomorrow, and then next week we'll just approve it without you having to be. <laughs> Nothing is obvious there, that's for sure. Well, that, that we're was talking point. nickels and dimes, but we it just want to make sure. It is a very small budget. Yeah. yeah. We just want to keep it in, on, in line with the. Well, we have to be consistent. Yeah, huh? yeah. exactly. But who are they consistent with? What is their job like? Well, it's an arbitrary. Well, step the grade. personnel, the personnel plan, come up with a. You know, we we went around and looked at what other towns were making on all these different different positions, other than elected positions. And, uh, they were inserted in the in the wage form, in the wage chart. And we also took into account for the lowest wage earners that they would be required to get uh, for our purpose if we want to pay in the minimum wage, although from the state does exempt us. But obviously we, we want to be part of the program, so that's where that stands. Okay. So I'm simply going to talk to Debbie in the morning. Yes, please. I'm going to go to Finance Committee tomorrow night. Right. Right. And then we'll vote. Mayor, no, you're not coming to visit you next week. <laughs> <laughs> you're always welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. <coughs> okay, our next uh, item agenda is an appointment with Matt Caffrey. Matt, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Yes. Uh, to discuss a proposed zoning change for the parcel on the corner of Route 1 and Weathersfield Street as shown on Assessor's Map 23, Lot 47, and proposed warrant article for the May 6, 2019 uh, town meeting. 
So, Matt, I guess uh, your, your client has submitted a petition to rezone this from the outlying district to the business light industry district. And as a citizen's petition, has to be treated a certain way. So, okay, is there anything you want to say about the matter? Of course, you. I think, first of all, uh, good to see you again. Good Long to see you again. See. Yep. Uh, gentlemen, I have just a couple of things I'd like to hand out if I could. This is the zoning map itself so you can get a sense of where we're talking about. And then, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do you have a copy of the citizen's petition? Yes, I think we all do. Yes. <laughs> the parcel in question is at the corner of Route 1 and, um, and uh, Weathersfield Street, which is right down here. <coughs> I don't know if you can see that. It's mm -hmm. a big parcel. So the proposed change that um, was before the planning board. It's across from the winery, across Route 1 from the winery. Exactly. And you can see that what's already happened uh, up to this point is that the decision has been made, or at least the planning board's recommending that um, the zoning district be changed all the way down, coming all the way down Route 1, uh, with the exception of that corner parcel, which is owned by Bernie LLC, which is my client, uh, Ed Surratt. So very simply, uh, Mr. Chairman, we're looking to, to simply extend that line to include the corner parcel, which my client owns, and that's the nature of, of the proposed amendment. Uh, and just very briefly, the reason we think that uh, should happen is uh, the, there's no difference uh, in form or function of, of that parcel compared to the others. They're all they, they, uh, facing um, the um, frontage is going to be on Route 1. This is a commercial area. The district, has, uh, rather the planning board has already uh, established that they think that it's appropriate to bring that uh, business light industry district designation to the area immediately north of my client's property. There's really no difference between my client's property and the one immediately to the, to the side of it. So what we're trying to do here is, is in fairness, allow for um, the, the appropriate use of the parcel that's in question. And um, my client is here tonight. Uh, Mr. Surrett's here. We have a few people who uh, obviously have come that have an interest in this uh, particular issue, but we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, uh, we're not going to resolve uh, this issue tonight. I mean, the Board of Selectmen is not the board, the town board, that actually resolves these questions. It's the planning board makes a recommendation on any zoning matter after a public hearing and then goes to, then it has to be approved by town meeting. Uh, so our only role tonight, uh, formal role, is really a ministerial one. It's to uh, refer your zoning proposal or your zoning petition to the planning board for them to hold a public hearing. And in fact, we've been advised by our town council that we really have, that the board of selectmen uh, since your petition is in order, it has a required number of signatures, that the Board of Selectmen really uh, has no discretion not to refer it to the Planning Board. So that's going to be the result, I believe, of this, this meeting tonight. But, I, you know, I would just want to point out my own a few observations about uh, your contention that there's no difference between uh, this, this parcel and the other parcel. I would say that there is a difference, that this parcel is on Weathersfield Street, which has been designated as a scenic uh, roadway in our master plan and it's also in a uh, in a residential neighborhood it's a, across directly across the street from this parcel are four or five homes and also um, we we treated I think it's worth noting that we treated the other lots on the exact uh, uh, the opposite side of route one in the same manner uh, as, as this parcel was treated. In other words, they were left out of the, of the new uh, zoning district. And that's because they, they were left out deliberately uh, because, like, like this parcel, they, were, they are also um, in a residential, they're on Weathersfield Street in a residential neighborhood. So uh, there were good sound planning reasons, uh, I believe, for the planning board to have uh, taken the action that it did. Now, this this is going back to the planning board. They could theoretically change their position, but, but uh, that, so I just that thought I'd just make those two points. But uh, any other discussion from the board? Okay. So again, uh, our only formal role is to refer this to the planning board tonight. So I guess I'd ask for a motion to do. I'll that. make that motion. Second. Okay, the motion to refer the matter to the planning board is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you.
see you later, Matt. Okay, moving on to old business number three, which is discuss the Hammond Street Fire Station. And uh, I think Don and Doug, you want to come up to the front row? Okay, thanks for coming. Um, Bob and I uh, met with Don and Doug uh, last Friday uh, to discuss the future status of the, the old fire station. Of course, as everyone knows, Raleigh has a brand new fire station. Uh, my understanding is that the fire department will be officially or formally relocating to the new station sometime in, in uh, April. So the question becomes, what is to happen to the old fire station? And are, are we going to make a clean break with that, or are we going to continue to utilize it in some fashion? Uh, so um, Don, Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the association's uh, position that they'd be willing to donate that building to the town? Th that, that is obviously one of our options. Mm -hmm. um, that would be our preferred option. The other would be to potentially sell the building right. or whatever might be appropriate at that point. But our concern is to offer it to the town first. Right. And uh, the fire chief does would want to keep one truck in that building if that were if that's feasible and economical and all that to, in order to provide better coverage to that side of town. And that's his rationale. And when we voted for the new fire station, we were told that's right. that a truck would remain downtown. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Which makes a lot of sense since your two full-timers right now live downtown so they could get to that truck to service like Seaview or something quicker than they could get up to the new one and then back down. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to correct the record a little bit that the, my statement at that meeting upstairs and it's in the minutes was that the goal was to maintain a fire right. engine downtown if we could reach a satisfactory yeah. agreement right. with the association. Yeah. situation right now is uh, we pay the association owns the building right and under the current agreement we pay for insurance heat light all the utilities right. and at this point with the new building and I'm speaking for myself here right now we can't afford to run two stations under the current budget situation and if you sat here and listened to the previous budget presentations, we're looking at some issues in terms of next year's budget, what kind of much funds we might have. Obviously, the, the new fire station is going to take up all the money they were currently spending on the downtown station, plus some more than that. That's an estimation at this point. But mm -hmm. Obviously, it's a bigger building, a bigger situation. Insurance costs alone with a new fire station there, with all the equipment and the computers and all the brand new equipment and insurance costs for what we're paying at the old station versus the new station is going to skyrocket. Uh, so we've got some hefty expenses. So uh, at this point, you know, our goal is to keep an engine downtown, but I think on a temporary basis, I'm not sure that's going to be doable. Uh, my, my suggestion is that we move out as of May 1st, turn the building back to you, so we're not, we, we don't want to be paying any expenses for that building after May 1st. Uh, if, in fact, you want to donate the building to us, or we talk about later on about getting a, an engine in that building, or we put one in an engine somewhere else, uh, that's certainly under discussion, but I think at this point we can't afford to run two buildings. <coughs> there, just, there just isn't money for that. And, uh, if when when we discussed this last, I don't know, was it last year, Sharon, when we talked about the engine down, well, probably two years ago now, but the idea yeah, was that we, we, what the town was looking for was we would lease one bay if we could come to some agreement on that. Part of the problem is that if we put a fire engine in there, we need to pay the insurance to ensure that our equipment is, is insured. And 
and I'm not, that's why, the one reason why we assumed the insurance cost for that old right. building at the time of the original agreement was because we had to make sure that, you know, a couple of million dollars worth of fire equipment was, was properly insured under the town's program. So, at, at this point, you know, I'll, uh, I mean, that's my point of view. I don't know how the other board members feel, but I, I, we're running into a real issue with the budgets here. And uh, obviously, we've been just built a six million dollar fire station, right. and we understand that there is going to be, other than you, Don, you're on the right side of town. <laughs> it yeah. will be a little difficult to for the guys downtown to get over. I think I think some of that can be overcome with uh, with manning issues, and maybe the, whoever the full time person is on call on this side of town can have a. A pickup truck or one of the one of the other fire vehicles to take home and then respond to the station. Uh, the other issue is we're dealing with and we still have to work out in the budget the Manning situation. Uh, we, the board has basically told the chief that we want the station, the new station, manned as close to 16 hours a day, five days a week as we can. Uh, there was some talk about keeping you know half the fire department down here and half of that's not going to happen. Uh, we're, we're paying, we're hiring two additional firefighters. We, we can't afford to have five people sitting in the fire station up there. So that'll, if we can increase the coverage, the first response coverage to 16 hours a day for five days, that's certainly going to reduce the need for call firefighters to be running across town. Or at least they can be as a backup more than uh, the, the initial responders if, if we can work there. And that hasn't been decided exactly yet. We're still Chiefs on vacation, so we're still negotiating yeah. and talking about how we're going to do that. But it's a situation that, uh, like I say, we built a six million dollar station, and uh, obviously the equipment and the and the uh, the safety equipment in that station, the showers, the uh, everything else that's in there is state of the art. We're paying for it, and we, we certainly want to. If we do a station, an engine downtown here, it's strictly going to be garaged, housed. Not and the intent is not to have a a full-time working station down here. No, we never realized, we never thought it would be just to keep one truck right. there. That would be the goal, and I'm hoping yeah. that once we get the budget straightened out for next year, or we yeah, work we out with that. it, depending on what how the yeah. negotiations go <coughs> with you, you, your people and, uh, you know, Cliff and Bob, maybe we can work something out to have that happen sooner rather than later. But I, I, at this point, we, as far as I'm concerned, and I've been dealing with a town administrator with the budgets, May 1st, we need to... What, about May 1st, we're going to assume full-time status at the, hopefully before new that, station. at the new sure. station. And, you know, it's an air-conditioned building, it's heated, to, I mean, it's a beautiful building, it's what everybody goes by and sees. But beautiful buildings cost money to run, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's a matter of, of funding. It isn't that we don't want to put an engine down here right away, but this funding isn't, isn't going to allow for it. There, there's now. also the matter that we can't afford to keep it. No, I just, no, I'm perfectly, I'm not saying that we, the town, we may or may not want it. Yeah. But I mean, that's a subject of further negotiations, obviously. Right. Yes, it, uh, it isn't something that we have an income for. Right. And the, and the other thing is, it's an, it's an old 1880 or something. It's an old, old, old building. That, well, not all of it. When we take it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a lot of maintenance costs, so, you know, to maintain it and bring it up to... Uh, up to par, so I admit that, but those are discussions that can be in done, place yeah. right. outside of this meeting here between the parties. It's just a matter of, I think, townspeople need to know what our goals are. Yeah, I, um, as you heard the police chief tonight talking about <coughs> utility costs for the new building, I <coughs> imagine what the fire chief is going to be presented with, with utility costs, especially in trying to maintain two buildings also, but you know, Doug, when we when we first started to look for, look for the land, and we were on the, the we had that three-year committee just to find the land. One of the most important things we looked for was where was the center part of town. Where was to so they we could access all sides of towns from from one location, and we three years we spent Doug remember all those <laughs> meetings. Um, sure. Yeah, and uh, we came up with the only place that we could find was right there, you know, where the fire station. I mean, where the police station is, and to you know, put the building at that location. Um, 
as we go forward, I, th I think we're going to have to look and see what the cost is of if we, if we take that building and what's the cost of utilities for that, for that building. And if we just have one bay, so we have to take all this into consideration. And there's a lot to, on the table here. So, so um, we'll be saving, I believe, nine thousand dollars a year in rental payments for the for the building, right? I think it's nine thousand a year. Yeah. No, so that's be, a, you, you'll be saving more than nine thousand. Well, well, I, uh, well. Let me finish, please. So, so just in rent, you'd be be saving nine thousand, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've been paying us twenty thousand a year, including payment, renting of equipment and stuff. Right. Okay. But that, okay. You know, that's separate. Yeah. Okay. But. Um, it, according to, I uh, looked at the uh, utility bills for uh, FY19, I think it was 7000 for electricity and gas. So, uh, but since um, there's no, there's not going to be anyone actually working right. in that building, it seems to me we would pay somewhat less than that because you could just keep the heat down to 60% or whatever. Just so, just so know, the trucks the don't pipe, freeze. Keep the trucks and the pipes from freezing. Yeah. So, but I, I and I have no idea what the insurance would cost for well, that. The, so, the thing we run into insurance, we ran into it at the Brad Street House when that was vacant. If we if we are insuring a building that is vacant, no one's there on a regular basis. Insurance rates skyrocket. Is it a vacant building if you're keeping? Yeah, because nobody's working there. Yeah. Well, we need people working or living there, one or the other. And it's the people would we, be going. I mean, be keeping a truck there, and every time there was a call on this edge of town, I mean, someone <laughs> would. going to make it. Well, I don't know. Is if, it, if we had a, somebody in the manning the office for eight hours, that's a little different situation. Well, sure, may, yeah, but I don't know how they define vacant, but how the insurance in industry defines vacant, I have no idea. But uh, well, if the board is, are you asking me to look into it? I, I'm not sure where you are, what position you are at this point. I can certainly. Yeah, well, I think we're just talking. I think, I think we're just. I wasn't sure how we're just talking through it at this yeah. point. Uh, the other thing is, um, shouldn't we, uh, this would have to be, the donation of the building would have to be approved by the by a town meeting. Right. Uh, should we not keep our options open by proceeding with that and, and putting uh, a warrant on the, uh, putting something on the warrant to authorize uh, the donation of the building to the town? Uh, I think that's. Yeah, I think that should be an open option. Uh, it, there's a, there's a well, lot involved here. In, yeah. in other words, like at, at one point, in other words, part of our issue, if we take if we take that station, it's not like I say, it's an old building. Right. It needs to be updated, upgraded, and so on and so forth. If we put one fire engine in there, the building, it's too small for the fire department, but it's an awful lot of space in there that we need to heat just to keep the pipes from freezing and so on and so forth. So you, and in, when any building that you're not using is going to deteriorate more quickly than a building that's being used day in and day out. And these are all things that kind of need to be considered in the, right. in, in the negotiation. And if, in fact, we get the Didax building, uh, that, you know, when we first talked about that three years ago, that was going to be, as far as Didax was concerned, that was an emergency they needed us to yeah. move right away sure. while we moved. And then the whole process has really slowed down, and I would expect that probably going to be another year or two before we're in there, but if we get the Didax building, then we, we're going to have an overabundance of space if we take the fire station, too, so it's, these are the kind of things we got to kind of look at. So or if we take the fire station, is it something that in two years we can, we'll be able to sell it? That's true, yep. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. That kind of, I don't know what yep. kind of restrictions are on the deeds, or you know, I don't know how your association if you're not having the building anymore, what, what kind of situation you guys are in, so well, uh, I think that's something that needs to be, you know, discussed it when you guys have your negotiations. Yeah, our bylaws state that if we abandon, dismiss, be, weren't an association anymore, then that would become the town's building anyway. Okay. But uh, we're not disbanding. We want to still help out the fire department right. and, and this, with, this with the funds well, we I mean, have. If we don't have the building, I think there's more than that the chief would be more than happy to allow association to use some space at the new station. I, I, I don't yeah. think that would be a problem. It's just that if we have, you know, the, the my, one of the original proposals when we were talking about that was, well, maybe the cable TV could use part of it for a studio. Well, right now they have no desire to build a studio yeah. because cable TV may well be obsolete in the next few years, so they're not going to invest a lot of money in, in that. 
one of the things we were looking at with Didax is that the light department moving up there and helping us to, to pay the costs and, and they would expand their space. But the fire station, if uh, you know, without some major renovations, I'm not sure what else, other than parking an engine in the bays, I'm not sure what else we could possibly put up there. It's, Perhaps an ambulance. Well, that would be something that if the ambulance company was, was interested in, once again. Yeah, that's you know, just a thought. Yeah, no, I mean, it's something in the, in the negotiations that would need to be need to be looked at. Yeah. But I think the big thing when we discussed having an engine downtown was obviously the need for the call firefighters to be able to get in a timely manner. Yeah. And it, it's, it's going to be a little difficult, but on the other hand, at this point, we're expanding the fire department by two guys. And I tell people that probably within five or ten years, we may well have seven or eight full-time firefighters because it's just getting harder and harder to get oh, qualified to get. people that are available to be called firefighters. So, and, and it's not just that <coughs> Georgetown's going through the same problem. Newbury's mm -hmm. going through. Everybody in the area is going through the uh, the problem of call firefighters, and, and they're dedicated. I mean, they've let's, let's face it. You can back in the history of all these towns, and Raleigh in particular, the call firefighters have held us together, and it's just. The, the training required, the hazards material, the, I mean, it's just, uh, and now with the increase in calls, I don't know what the chief's number of the calls this year, but it's probably up in the seven or $800 range, and these guys, oh, it's up our there. guys, men and women, are responding at 3 o'clock in the morning and then driving into Boston for a 7 o'clock job in Boston, and it's just, it's too much to expect that these people are going to be able to do that, and then take their weekend to train. Yeah. Well, these so, are all major discussions, and right now our situation and our immediate situation is that, you know, my recommendation to the board is we say May 1st, we, we are out of that building. And I assume you, you guys can maintain it for a short period of time anyway. And, and, and in discussions well, move forward, if we put a town meeting article on it, we, if we want to uh, take the donation, you know, get town meeting to, to say, okay, we'll, we'll accept the donation. And then at some future time, we'll have to decide I just want to make sure that if, in fact, we take the building, that we're not going to be locked into, you know, requirement that we can't sell it or something like that. If well, yeah, we'd have to. There wouldn't be any restriction yeah. like that. I mean, no. uh, but those are all discussions in the future. I just think that <coughs> the money situation is such that May 1st we need to be out of it. You know, when it comes to the fire service in, in Raleigh here, this is a historic moment. Really, we're moving, you know, to a brand new building. And uh, the association, which has you know stood by the town for all these years, right. um, this is big doings. This you know with this a, a transformation for the town. So um, we'll have to look at all the different aspects of yeah. this as we as we go forward. So do we want to have a motion to put it on the warrant? Or does that make sense at this point? I mean, it seems to me it probably would. I think we should. Well, I think we, even if we don't do it tonight, I think let's, let's take a look at the options in the next week or two. Is yeah. if we don't want to do it tonight, yeah. we'll put it on. Well, when's the warrant close? Well, we can do it. We can even do that on the special if you want. Well, that's what it would go on. We'll go on the special, which, yeah. Yeah. Would just be I mean, a vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen right. Right, to but accept it. It would not be binding on the Board of Selectmen. Right. This the time. So we can, so we can do that tonight. I'll, I'll yeah. make a motion. Yeah. Work, I'll second uh, that. Well, so uh, should we uh, include in the motion asking Debbie to uh, uh, get, get a title and do whatever else mm -hmm. is necessary? Well, to well, like you say, well, I'm sure there's a 21E. There's a, there's well, I, yeah, I just septic, don't know if you want to wait to see the septic meeting. system no. testing. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff involved. If we accept it, because so we can defer that until after the vote. So we yeah. have a lot of cost in the transfer that's required yeah. by, by law. It isn't just a matter of oh, here's your building. Good luck, guys. You know, no, I know. Well, I mean, there's a lot to the building also because there's a generator. Well, the yeah, generator yeah. belongs to the town. Hmm? Yes, it does. Oh, I know, but I mean, yeah, you know, but there's, I mean, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of there's a lot of issues. Like I yeah. say, it's, it's, we're not going to. Yeah, it's here. it's so much. <laughs> it's this is ours. This is yours. <laughs> and we're trying. And I to would be perfectly happy to make a motion that we have a town meeting article to uh, allow the selectmen to accept the building, accept the building yep. at the appropriate time. I don't know how the best way I'll, is. I'll second that. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Thank Aye. you. Thank you. And I would just make, just a final, I would make a motion that, you know, we notify the association that we, we will vacate the building as of May 1st. 
because even if the new station isn't 100% ready, they're going to be up there anyway. I mean, if the, if the pavement isn't in, uh, I'm a, they're going to have to move up there anyhow. You know I mean, it's just well, you're the under building itself is all set. It's, it's, it's an issue. You're, you're, you're under contract through June 30th for the year. Well, I don't think we have had a contract yet. For well, we, you keep extending the contract, no, so. We haven't even extended it. I don't well, know what. We I think extended the contract in about five or seven years. I think years. we're month to month, aren't we? I think. Well, no, I <laughs> at yeah, this point, it's, but it's, uh, it's been allowed to lapse, and nobody complains, so it's, it's that's the way yeah. it's been. But, but uh, and all, the last payment is going to be made on the forestry. Yeah, when does the when does the forestry truck go? I was going to ask that. You got one more payment. One more payment. One more year. One more payment. One more payment. payment. One more this year. payment. So that'll yeah. be all done. That'll be all done. May first, I think that payment. Yeah. Is so May first. that part of that twenty thousand dollars that you pay. Yeah, pay and that's something that. We have to negotiate transferring ownership of that to you, because that's. Yeah, probably. I think yeah. that I think that's registered under the association, along with Engine Four. Yeah, you. I, you, I think you can just donate that without nothing to require a town meeting vote. Or just donate to the town of one used, twenty-year-old forestry. <laughs> <laughs> Well maintained. <laughs> well maintained. Well maintained. Well maintained. Yes. Slightly used. <laughs> yes. You, you've actually paid for yeah, it and, for the, and uh, you've so paid all the maintenance on it and everything. So, so. I, you know, does that sound all right, Don? Is it yeah, you guys will meet and sure enough. work through the details and believe me, I just I would like to say on my behalf and I'm sure the board I yeah, the board echoes my feelings that we are going through a big transition here and mm -hmm. the appreciation for all that the association has done. The association members, uh, a lot of history, a lot of great names, sure. and a, lot a lot of, of history. wonderful people have come through that fire department and provided service to the town. And a lot of these new, newer people in town don't understand and don't know mm. what uh, you know what the history of the fire department is. I mean, it's uh, uh, twenty years ago it was all volunteer. Yeah, it was all yep. volunteer. So I mean, it's it, it certainly yeah. changed, and uh, believe me, it's getting more expensive. The days of a, oh, sure. a, a relative. In expense is, is gone. I mean, it's just all these things. It's, it's just not going to get better. Either. That's what killing <laughs> killing our budgets. But yeah. we, we have to do it. We have no choice. So. You have a motion to? Uh, did we vote on that or for the May first? <laughs> okay. Did we get a second to the motion? I seconded. Okay. So we, the motion to put this on the warrant for the Maytown meeting. No, we did that. Yeah. Yes, so we did that. That's what I thought. But the, but the <coughs> motion for uh, May first. Yeah, motion to notify the. Oh, okay. To notify. Uh, the association. Do you think that's a good idea, or should you just leave it up to the chief to when he wants to no, leave? No, we're, we're going to make that decision. Okay, because uh, <laughs> I know <laughs> he's he's, chief, he's, he's talking about taking stuff at individual. Yeah, well, at if, other if you time. have to if there's money available, if we have to hire a mover, I don't think there's I don't know how much equipment's going out of there as far as office equipment. Probably not much. Oh, not uh, well, but his office. Fire equipment and stuff. Like he's got five weeks to. There's, there's no reason why they can't get it done, and, you know, and we have to hire a mover to do it. We'll hire a mover. There would be money available in that police budget to, to move Sharon, expenses. But the chief's office is as big as this table. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> the chief's office is a closet that my husband renovated so he could have an office. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. He has a desk and a chair, and you can't move. Yeah. These new homes got bigger closets in their homes than that yes. chief's office. Yes. Much bigger. Yes. Mm. Yeah. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna be completely lost in this new office. I mean, the big thing is that we're not gonna we're not gonna insure it anymore. Than, you, know, you, know, you guys need to be if it's gonna be yours, you probably wanna do something with some insurance just to see okay. what you wanna do. Okay, so uh, the motion is to notify formally notify the association that will be leaving as of May one. Has that been seconded? I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes out. Well, thanks for coming in. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Have a good one. Good night. Okay, we have a liquor license renewal. For the Raleigh Golf Course, LLC, 235 Dodge Road. It's a seasonal liquor license. Um, the renewal application is in order and requires approval of the Board of Selectmen. The applicant has the following money monies due the town, personal property taxes in the amount of four seventy six, light bills of eight hundred twenty one dollars and eighty seven 
$1,000.96, water bill of $138. Does the board wish to approve the license and not release it until these outstanding balances are paid? If, if approved, there's nothing the board needs to sign tonight. The liquor license will be prepared and available in the selectman's office this week for the selectman to sign. I'll second that. And to not release? Not released. Okay. Not Motion's been made and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Budgets. First up is a selectman. Showing an $80,000 increase in the collective bargaining reserve. But that's not really for the selectman's office. That's for um, whatever wage agreement is reached with the three unions. Showing a uh, increase in for the town administrator and the uh, assistant town administrator. Um, one item that's showing no increase is the selectman stipend. Uh, Total amount is $11,155 divided by five. Not that great with math. Um, as far as I know, um, this hasn't been discussed for a long, long time. It's like $2,250, yeah. I believe, from the stipend a year. It hasn't been discussed at a long, long time. There's been no increases in a long, long time. Does the board feel any interest in increasing, making a modest adjustment to the selectman stipend? I think out of the circumstances where we're looking at not increasing some staffing hours and stuff out of the departments, I think we should level fund the, uh, none, of, none of us are here for how much money we're making. And I think uh, we want to increase that when we are actually looking at uh, some difficult, maybe some difficult budgetary times with uh, some other departments that need increases. With in, increases in, in hours and things. So yep. I'll vote no anyway, so. Okay. I would just, you know, a moderate increase would be something where we spend a lot of time, and especially I know as the chairman, I, for four years I was the chairman, I both lived here at town hall. So uh, I think it's one of the, um, uh, probably the best deals for the townspeople, <laughs> the selectmen's <laughs> stipend. Uh, for, for what we do, so uh, I would say moderate increase. Mm -hmm. I tend to be on the side with Bob uh, in favor of a moderate increase, but it seems like we have a two to two split. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion will not carry. I mean, for any increase. No. Not as far as I'm yeah, concerned. Yeah, I, I just don't. You know, okay. moderate. You, you know, you want to take few hundred dollars or something I mean to me it just sets up at this point we were sitting here tonight and saying that we had a lot of money and we could we given you know like we, we were already telling the library and assessors and police and some of these others of the central services that we're going to wait uh, and I would say that the amount of money we're going to get is uh, not worth the aggravation as far as I'm concerned anyway. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Selectman's Department budget for fiscal year 2020. Any second? I'll second. Motion to approve has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Next up is a planning board budget showing a 7% increase. That's mostly attributed to attributable to the increase in the planner's salary and in the planner's salary. A slight reduction in expenses. Any discussion? I'll give you a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve the planning board budget has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Zoning Board of Appeals. Similar situation, wages, an increase in wages uh, for the assistant. I'll give you a motion to approve this. Second. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Inspection Department. That's just the new wage scales under the new plan. Yep. I'll give you a motion to approve. Any second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. The fire Department. Fire chief um, is away on vacation, but um, I think that if the board could maybe uh, narrow down some or um, some uh, give him some direction on uh, what he should be doing with that budget, it would be helpful so that when he comes back next week, we have he has a better idea of, of some maybe some broad goals of what we would like to see out of that budget. Well, there won't be any wage increases, correct? Because well, there will for the, be for the fire. Yeah, just um, fire so chief. With with the bargaining unit employees, um, there are called firefighters, which are on union, which he has, I believe, accounted for their increases as non-union employees. Um, and if you follow the guidelines I've given them. Um, you know, and be funding um, any wage increases separately. I think it's some other information he gave us previously. You know, the various chats on. I think he had, I don't have it with me tonight, but he had like six or seven proposals of staffing for the station. Mm -hmm. And I think each one of those, he had a, very, a variety of estimates on what the overtime uh, might be, uh, et cetera, and, it, and the utilization of the call fire department to fill in vacancies, depending on how he staffed it. So I think until we, until he gives us a, uh, what, how he's going to staff that, and my my own feeling is uh, we're not here to tell him how to how to run his shifts. I mean, my attitude is, and uh, that we want as close to 16 hours a day, five days a week as we can get. That may be 14 hours a day if you want some overlap, and you know some eight to four and evening shift comes in two to ten. Or, Three to eleven. I mean, that's something for him to make a decision on. But I think the townspeople expect to have as close as possible to five days, two shifts a day, which will save on some overtime. I mean, you know, it's, it's got to be worked out. He had a variety of scenarios there, what the cost might be, depending on which scenario. But I think it's up to him, as the chief, to make the determination of how he wants to staff it. I mean, I'm not sitting here telling the chief how to. And I don't think we should be telling him which option he should take, other than that the direction we give him is as close to 16 hours a day as possible, five days a week. And that, whether that includes weekends or it's just Monday through Friday, 16 hours or 14 hours, that's fine. I don't know how it might be easier to get call guys to respond on the weekends. I'm not sure how he was going to give us a, I don't know if he had it done before he left, but we were going to get it. We asked him for a a printout of a month's worth of calls or thereabouts with how many call firemen were responding to each call so we could have some idea as to what the fire response is. I, have, I haven't seen that unless he, I don't think he's, does he deliver that to us, did he? You know, I, I didn't see it in the package. I mean, he did that to us for us a number of years ago when we switched over to the uh, call firefighters for the, when we became, you know, call firefighters came to the association, became town employees, so I think it's, It'd be nice to see, and for the public to see, understand that, you know, sometimes there's two guys respond to a call, and that's all there is. And that's one reason why we hired the extra two people. And, and, and I think the other thing we need to look at is, is how, how these calls are dispatched. One of the things, one of the recommendations the chief had in there somewhere, and I, we've gotten a lot of paper from him in the last couple of years with the budget, was that on routine medical calls, they could be 
responded to by the two calls of guys on duty without calling in the call guys. In other words, if you got a, a, a kid breaks his arm, there's no need of six firemen showing up. Yeah. And if we've got two full two full time guys in the station working, they can show up along with one or two ambulance with two ambulance people when a, a couple of cruises and be more than adequate to handle the call. Obviously, if there's a serious accident or something. Beyond that, it's a different situation. But that is, there's some of these things that we, with the increase in cost to run the fire department now, we really have to take a look at the budgetary constraints that we're going to be under to get the most out of the staff without without hurting the safety of the office. In other words, if there's a if there's a fire and there's two guys working, they might have to wait at the scene until the call guys get there before they go into a burning building. We're not looking for them to go running into a burning building if they're not properly staffed. But on the other hand, at this point, uh, we don't have, we're not going to have three three guys. But he may want to, he may want to see Georgetown was using, the uh, last two or three years, they used the, the call force, hired them on a per diem basis to fill the station instead of any full-time people. So it may be, and I think even now the chief, when he's gone, he uses some Per diem call firefighters when they're available. Right? It's a little tougher now because the economy is booming, so there's not how many guys are available. But that's why it's important to see what the response is to the fire alarms for the last, you know, say a month. I'm not looking for a lot of data, but enough to give us an idea of, of what kind of response we're getting. So, and that'll affect his if he's going to fill in with uh, a number of call guys to make third third guy in the shift or something. If that's what. You, deem it is needed, then, you know, that's going to cost a little bit more money, too, so I think we need to uh, let him come up with a plan and then see what he's estimating the cost. So he's going to have to come up with a plan. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, you guys don't have to agree with me, but I mean, I think that's what, I think it's, he's, we're paying him to come up with a staffing plan for that station, and uh, he presented us with a bunch of scenarios, and, I, you know, I'm not going to go through the scenarios and tell him, you got to hire this, you got to hire that. It's He's got to look at them and take the whole look at the big picture and decide what, how, who, how many you know guys are going to work on what shifts and so on and so forth and how the how the calls are going to be taken taken used. Yeah, I think we should uh, hold off on uh, this and get uh, some more information from the chief yeah. and tell him our goal is that we want to get as close to 16 hours and that we want to see some more scenarios where it's worked out that how he's going to staff the. Right. Uh, New uh, building. I think his closest scenario was 14 hours, wasn't it? it was well, he's, he likes some overlap, and I, I don't have any objection. In other words, if it's, and I'm using the arbitrary numbers, if, if the guys, not right now, I think work 8 to 4, if uh, the other shift comes in uh, 2 to two to 10, right. yeah. uh, with two hours overlap, and there's, there's some training time, some, some time there to do other things, and you know, I don't have an objection to that, but yeah. I think that's up to is him. The, is there uh, a right. in the from the two to ten, and I don't know what you know when the busiest. I, I assume that I know a lot of times in the morning. Yeah. Is there a shift differential on it? I don't think it was right now because they haven't had any shifts. But it's something that will be bargained. That'll be, be, be bargained for. Okay. It's all going to be a bargainable issue. But I think uh, you know that, that's. It's difficult to, without the chief being here. He, he's, not, he's on vacation. So I guess. Will you be back for uh, next Monday? Yeah, so I, the idea was, because this is such a significant budget, has a has an impact in the operating budget of the town, um, knowing that he was not going to be here when I found that out, um, uh, the chairman and I thought we should at least have uh, the selectmen discuss it, see if we can put it in perspective, and see if there's any type of refinement uh, that we could send back to him of what really the selectmen are looking for you know, with the new fire station and the addition of two new full-time firefighters. And, and I think um, I, I do have some direction from the board at this point to convey to him, and that would be, you know, uh, the 16 hours around, you know, something around that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, like, you know, I, like Bob said, coverage I, mean, I, mean, I could, uh, you know, I can go along with, say, 14 hours. In other words, I, right. can, I understand that. A little bit of a little bit of overlap, but I don't want I don't want to see five yeah. people out there Monday through Friday, no. Uh, no. nine to five. I mean, that's, no. that's not why we hired the two additional firefighters and, and the call data. And, and we need the call data so we can at least uh, you know get an idea of how how serious is the situation. It's like I 
I tell people, people complain about the size of the station up there, and I do, I tell them, I say, you, believe me, within two, three, five, ten years, there's going to be a lot more than five firefighters. Well, it's not probably back day. When we, when we look at the whole process of putting the fire station up, we put a, we did not want a monument to the architect. That no, was no. said at this table many, many times. Yeah, no, and it's no. not a monument. No, this no, is a functional fire station. This is not, there's nothing, it may look nice, but, you know, aesthetically, well, that's, that's part of it, but it's under budget. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a space need. You need to run a fire department, properly run a fire department. So. We did, we did not go hog wild on this fire station at all. So, that's su sufficient, Debbie? I have enough to. Okay. Okay, emergency management. <coughs> well, I was familiar with, you know, we talked about making it in the emergency Well, I, I think there but was some, uh, there was just an idea. Um, yeah, I think we can so put that on hold anyway, okay. just because of the, the budget situation. If we are, if there's an intent to do that, I think it needs to be thrown into the, yeah, that makes sense. the mix of those other things. Shell, shellfish commissioners is. I don't understand. Oh, on the emergency. Zero funded. We're we're putting off the emergency, right? Okay. Are you still on that? You want to? I don't understand the calculation at all. I think he. Um, Why is he saying that uh, fiscal year twenty is eighteen ninety nine, but there's an increase of two thousand five hundred? Is that the emergency management uh, assistant? Um, yeah, I, I think he just has a problem with, with the uh, formula in Excel or something. Oh, okay. So we're gonna. We're putting put, that off. Putting right. that one off. Okay. Shellfish commissioner, zero funded. I'll give you a motion. Go through. Any seconds? Second. Motions have made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Shellfish Constable is also zero funded. Look at that motion. Second. Motions have made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, veterans. The Eastern uh, Essex District Assessment went up 10%. Yes. Any motions? Motion to approve. Second. Motions to made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Unemployment. The zero funded. Make a, mo make a motion. Second. Motions are made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Um, just to go back to the veterans, just to explain, um, I'm on the veterans board over there, vice chair, and uh, we add, added, we're adding a position because one of the there was a complaint about trying to get into the office, calling in, and um, when Karen's out on the office and also uh, the assistant, there's there's no phone coverage, so we're looking to bring somebody in to cover that. So all the towns together. Well, I'll provide that service. Mm -hmm. Unemployment. Did we vote on that? No. Yes. Or did we? Okay. Last one is Essex Regional Retirement. That's a mandated increase. I'll vote. Yeah. I'll make the motion. Second. Any second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Okay, so that. Sorry about that. Brings us to. We're on silent, but we forgot to. Which brings us to announcements. The public is invited to attend the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Tobin Bridge Rehabilitation Project informational meetings. 
which will be held Tuesday, tomorrow, March 19th at Ipswich Town Hall at 6 p.m. Wednesday, March 20th at the Peabody City Hall at 6 p.m. Thursday, March 21 at the Saugus Town Hall at 6 p.m. Monday, March 25 at the New Report City Hall at 6 p.m. Tuesday, March 26 at the Andover Town Hall. The MBTA will be conducting tests on the federally mandated positive train control system on the New Report commuter tra train line overnight during the hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the month of March. For more information, go to mvta.com slash ptc. Earth Day event co-hosted by the Raleigh Open Space Committee and the YMCA on Saturday, April 20th <coughs> at the Dodge Reservation Camp Cedar Mill, 390 Wethersfield Street from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, rain date is Sunday, April 21. The event is a day of fun for the whole family. Events include yoga at 9 a.m., trail clearing from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., YMCA health kids programs and exhibits. And 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., a community hike. For more information, call the Y at 978-356-1102 or the Conservation Office at 978-948. 2330. The following offices are on the May 14, 2019 Annual Town Election Ballot. Board of Selectmen, two seats for three-year terms. Constable, one seat for three-year term. Board of Assessors, one seat for a three-year term. Planning Board, one seat for a five-year term. Housing Authority, one seat for a five-year term. Municipal Light Board, one year, one one-year unexpired term. Municipal Light Board, one seat for a three-year term. Municipal Light Board, one seat for a three-year term. Cemetery Commission, one seat for a three-year term. Shellfish Commission, one seat for a three-year term. Trustees of the Public Library, one seat for one year unexpired term. Trustees of the Public Library, one seat for a two-year unexpired term. And also three seats for a three-year term. Triton Regional School Committee, Newbury member, one seat for a three-year term. Rowley member, one seat for a three-year term. Salisbury member, one seat for a three-year term. Salisbury member, one member, unexpired term. For information on the election, for deadlines to take out and submit nomination papers, please contact the town clerk's office at 948-2081. The town has the following vacancies, Agricultural Commission, Associate, Cultural Council, Zoning Board of Appeals, Associate, one seat, and Deputy Shellfish Constables, two positions. For more information, please call the contact the Selectman's Office at 948-2372. The Rowley Food Pantry is in need of donations. Donations can be left at the Rowley Public Library. The Food Pantry is open on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and on Thursdays from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Motion to adjourn. We do a motion. Motion to adjourn. Made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. <laughs>